Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another production from bristolspotlight.tech, a video documentary uh, hub which, uh, like this one, uh, seeks to expose to the general public egregious corruption uh, and violence, uh, criminal violence of course, uh, perpetrated by various of the Avon and Somerset Constabulary, overseen by that egregious criminal of all, um, uh, Mr Andy Marsh, Chief Constable of Avon and Somerset Police, and various other judges, uh, members of the judiciary in Bristol uh, and in the High Court. Um, this particular video is entitled Richard Budd and the Scaffolders from Hell. Uh, Richard Budd is the man we see here. He is a. Uh, he works now for the Professional Standards Department of Avon and Somerset Constabulary. Uh, he used to be a frontline detective sergeant, I think, or um, detective of some description, uh, working for Avon Somerset Police. So he's an old boy who's fraternised and been uh, uh, working cheek by jowl with many of the officers. He is now called to uh, independently investigate, uh, and in this particular case, we shall see which is by no means a most uh, serious example of the sort of corruption uh, that, uh, and evil uh, and threat to the public this man, Richard Budd, is. Uh, in a moment we shall see the video, but uh, I should point out, and I'll come back to it um, at the end of the video, that this uh, the only uh, information I could find, or one of the few bits of information I can find about Richard Budd when he used to work as a um, a frontline police officer is he was involved in um, the an investigation into Gary Glitter um, uh, in terms of um, uh, obviously his paedophilic uh, activities um, it, it some time ago. Uh, but without further ado, uh, let us look at the video in question. Uh, and this is a just a brief uh, summary of, of what you're seeing about to see. Um, I had uh, attended Bristol Crown Court as a party in a case to uh, chase up some uh, a lot of stonewalling that I've been receiving from uh, HMCTS staff, or Her Majesty's Court Service staff, um, who hadn't responded to correspondence I'd uh, raised with them. And um, I became so in such a, embroiled in such an uh, unpleasant argument with the staff that I called the police. The, uh, the police uh, attended. This man, PC Tiley, who is a, a police constable, um, Garth Tiley, attended to supervise the situation or to try and resolve the situation uh, and um, I, I dealt with this uh, Mr Tidy before indeed he, I, I, I alleged that he'd kidnapped me uh, a few years back um, by claiming that I was uh, a breach of the peace or committing a breach of the peace and momentarily arresting me taking me uh, a half a mile up the road and then releasing me again saying that the breach of the peace had passed. Um, I won't go into the details of that case because it would complicate matters but let's just say we've, what we have history. Uh, and um, he's ref I'm trying to uh, make a criminal complaint against staff members at the uh, Bristol Crown Court offices. And uh, we're arguing, or I'm trying to make some headway, uh, and uh, Tyler is constantly interrupting me. He's decided that he wants to speak to me directly next to the scaffolders who are working and making a lot of noise uh, in Small Street. Um, so it's impossible to hear myself talk uh, and to make any progress. And then, of course, Tyler himself is talking over me when I begin to talk. We'll come back to that. Um, but as we shall see, a builder, um, who I should just simply call from now on Scaffolder, because I don't know his name, I never did know his name, his name was never taken by the police. Uh, so just to the uh, abbreviation, or, or, or for simplicity, we'll just call him Scaffolder, as though that is his name. And um, he, he decides he wants to become involved in this uh, heated argument that I'm having with Tylee. So without further ado, let's look at the video, uh, and then I'll come back to... Uh, how Richard Budd is involved in it and, and what conclusions he came to in his role as a professional standards investigator. Okay. I had no intention of doing so. No, I'm, ca I'm, I'm calling you up on a lie. And now you're talking over me. What am I supposed to do? No, you know you're talking over me. You see, you call me Ben again. You call me Ben again. Should I call you? Well, what should I? Am, 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 am I supposed to call you? Oh, that's very agile, isn't it? Is that is that diffusing the situation? Is that is that diffusing the situation? Talking over me continually? We're going to of course, it's not. Because I've tried to take crime details yeah. from you, Mr. Gray. Yeah. You've refused. So but you're going to arrest me if I go back in there banging on the. Uh, yeah. You haven't got the evidence for it. Is what you've told me. Sorry. You've said you haven't got the evidence to tell. No, I know. I had one letter. I've got plenty of evidence. So I said I can take an email address from you if you. No, want I thought you. I thought you were getting. I thought you were getting. I thought. 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 I thought you were getting a. I thought you. I thought. I thought. I thought you were getting a bit. Sorry. Can I look? Can I help you, mate? 
Yeah. Yeah. What would you do? Because because no, you, no, you're standing there. Eyeball me. Put me straight to put me straight to sleep. Put me straight to sleep. Put me straight to sleep. Put me straight. Because I'll remove him for you. Remove me. Remove me. Remove me. Look at this maniac. This savage maniac. He's going to remove me. You're going to. You're going to make my mother. You, can, you come and threaten me with violence. You st no, but he's an outlaw. But me, me, look at it. 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 Yes, it. Yeah, you are. You, a monster. You're a monster. You're a monster. You're, a monster. You're filth. You're terrorizing. Yeah, the fact that you are in the same freedom as children, as, as innocent parties. You're filth. You're filth. You're filth. Go and knock me straight out, please. Please, okay. please, right, please, please, please. You see, you see what a monster you are. You gotta get past him. You gotta get six months, mate. I'm not gonna go straight down. I'm not gonna stand here. I'm not gonna stand here. I'm not gonna go straight down. I'm not gonna go stand here. I'm not gonna go out with one punch, mate. Tell you what, I've got an iron jaw. I've got an iron jaw. I'm going nowhere with this guy's threatening me. I'm gonna call the police again. Yeah, 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 they're here. 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 It's Anybody mouthing off when they're already here. Mouthing off when they were already here. They're already here and you got your mates with you. Yeah, big man. Big man. When there's two officers already here, what a hero. What a hero. What a hero. Oh, you can put me to sleep. Does that make you clever? You can put me to sleep. Wow. What an achievement. Excuse me. Yeah, because I'm terrorized with this guy. So he's going to put me to sleep. What is that? Threat to kill. Put me to sleep. That's a threat to kill in front of you guys. In front of you guys. How are you going to put me to sleep? So he, he can carry on to me. He can carry on to me. I haven't threatened him. I just asked him to stop staring at me. Please, please, please. Oh, yeah. Please. Go on. Smile. Smile. Cackle for the camera. You, 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 you. Go on. Smile for the camera. Come on. You saw a cackle. Have a cackle with these guys. He's in charge of security. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Let's not rise to it. Come on. We're here to, to talk about something. Where's my mobile phone? What's been going on? The reason you initially. So, ladies and gentlemen, there, that is the video in question. Uh, I've cut it a, a bit short because what happened after the bit that's I, I, after the, the, the cut is, is not very relevant to this complaint. It doesn't tell you much more after things have calmed down um, at the point that I've cut the video. And of course, the video, I put the video down, um, perhaps foolishly, um, in the heat of the moment. And it, 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 all it is recording is bits of paper flying all over the place. And uh, nobody can really see who's talking afterwards. So, um, you, But you see the main uh, incident involving myself and Scaffolder and Mr. Tiley and the female officer, whose name I think is Congrave or Gongrave. Um, who doesn't play a very important role in, in this matter. Um, so what I should do, ladies and gentlemen, I'll just take you through the uh, report from uh, Richard Budd. Now, Richard Budd, as we've already established, is an old-serving police officer uh, from the, 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 the front ranks of the police force who was then uh, called upon to independently investigate the colleagues, uh, his, his, his former colleagues uh, on the force, so not particularly suitable uh, I would suggest for that for that role. He is involved in all complaints that I make against the police, and I should stress uh, there are many more videos to come of this nature. This is a relatively low level complaint in terms of the other complaints that I have made that have been whitewashed and covered up and colluded in by Richard Budd. Uh, and you can see, I hope now from the video, and you can see for yourself that this is quite a serious complaint in and of its own right. So you'll ho hopefully be somewhat surprised to hear that, that this is actually a, a very trivial complaint compared to others that I have um, in terms of Richard Budd, and indeed others where I've been quite severely injured uh, um, by the people that are supposed to be protecting me and other members of the public. Uh, this case reference is case reference CO103320, and Richard Budd, his collar number is 9387. I don't think he has any rank, but he's a, I think he's a civilian technically, but he has a, a number here. And it's been signed off by Detective Inspector 2113 Gary Stevens, uh, PH, that's a Stevens with a PH, uh, who's said that Budd has carried out a perfectly satisfactory investigation. And Budd, uh, in turn, has said that Tylee has 
acted totally properly throughout the incident that we've just seen. Um, so before I read the report, I'll just give a brief recap um, or a, a quick account of what I can see on the video. Um, I should stress that um, Mr. Budd refers to the BWV, which is the body-worn footage of Tiny, because he's also filming me as I'm filming him um, and filming events that happen between me and Scaffolder. Uh, and indeed other, other scaffolders, and indeed we'll see towards the end even a uh, security guard, in quotation marks again, uh, from um, the Bristol Crown Court itself. I am uh, involved in this heated situation with, with, with um, Mr Tiley. Uh, this builder has come over, a scaffolder has come over uh, from, he was way up the street, he's come down clearly to rub a neck on the uh, altercation between myself and, and Tiley, or the low level uh, altercation, raised voices, um, no higher than that. Uh, he's got his arms folded like this, he's, 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 he claims to be on the phone, although of course it doesn't seem that he, that, uh, from how he acted afterwards, that he had been involved in any conversation. But assuming he was, he's clearly staring straight at me. We can see uh, from this photograph here, which is taken the moment the camera lands on him, he's already been staring at me for at least 30 seconds a minute because that's why my attention is drawn to him. Uh, and I ask him what he wants. Uh, uh, if I can help him and uh, does he want something and if he said he wants something he, could, he would effing uh, tell me about it. So he's, he, he has committed a Section 5 public order offence. By any criteria he has sworn loudly in public which certainly usually obtains a, a warning from a police officer if they carry on like that they will be arrested even if it's not an offence or an arrestable offence in and of itself. Um, I move towards him instinctively, not very far. If we take as the sort of the, the measuring point uh, or the yardstick, the black sort of um, uh, bit, bit of metal posting or whatever it is to the left of me or the left of the camera, uh, I'm about six foot away from that when I first uh, let my camera first lands on Scaffolder. Scaffolder is about 10 feet um, on the other side of the um, dividing uh, sculpting or whatever it is, um, a bit of trestling or something, and uh, I move slightly towards, so I'm finishing up about a foot or two from the trestle uh, d dividing line, and he has come down, further down the road, but of course he's already come all the way from the top of the road to position himself maybe 10, 15 feet away from me to when he begins to eyeball me. Um, and then within seconds, when I've asked, when I've approached him and said, what, do you, what does he mean by what's he going to do to me in terms of telling me about it? Uh, he immediately says he's going to put me to sleep. He's going to knock me out. Uh, he's going to remove me if the police don't remove uh, me himself. So he's saying he's going to kidnap me. I think that sounds like. Uh, and my complaint, obviously, to the police um, is uh, to the professional standards department is that Ty Lee has simply colluded in these assaults, these threats to kill, which putting to sleep is how I interpret it as, uh, and all the other assaults and harassment, uh, and um, the, just allowed him to, 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 to go his way, um, and by, by so doing has colluded in the offences that have been carried out by uh, Scaffolder. So I will give a, a brief account of, 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 of the, well, I'll give a, a verbatim account of what, uh, uh, of the conclusions that um, Richard Budd came to. I should point out that Richard Budd, in fact, his report is many, many pages. I'm not going to read them all out, but he gives a, almost a verbatim account of, of all the argument I've had with Tylee in, in the, in the uh, court building and what the argument has been about and what I'm complaining about all of which is, is largely irrelevant to my complaint about how Tylee has dealt with um, the uh, incident with, the, uh, with, with Scaffolder. Um, m m quite a considerable amount of public money and police resources have gone into this report. Uh, the report deals, uh, the substance of the report, or most of the report, deals with something that has absolutely nothing to do with the grounds of my complaint. My complaint was, that, was maladministration that I was being stonewalled by the staff at the HMCTF, uh, Her Majesty's Court Services. They weren't responding to correspondence within the 10 days they were required to. There were serious ongoing matters that I needed them to respond to. Uh, I'm a litigant in person. I, I don't have any representation, so I need to be able to correspond and have responses to uh, the uh, staff who, who ha had the hotline to the judge. So the judge in the case that uh, was involved, that, that, that was relevant to, the, to, to this um, uh, disagreement, uh, it clearly um, it, it was being kept out of the loop as much as I was because there was no information that was going either to me from the staff or from the staff to the judge. So it was quite a serious complaint. 
Um, and I get into this discussion and uh, Tylee insists we're gonna ha he's not going to go back into the courtroom. He's not going to go down, or court building rather. He's not going to go down the street or up the street away from the builders to, for a quieter spot to discuss myself as a complainant and victim of crime, um, which I was. Um, he's going to have the discussion right next to the scaffolders and he, um, he's going to talk continually over me and we can hear him doing that and, and then everything ensues. So uh, he did, as I say, the, the, most of the, 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 the report is, is completely irrelevant to the complaint because I don't, there's no point in my complaining about how Tiny has dealt with the staff or dealt with that matter, not least because of course the staff are in the pockets of the police and the police are in the pockets of the staff and so um, no investigation of worth its sort would, would, would transpire and, and it would just become too complicated to even begin to complain about that side of things. But the conclusions are what's important. The conclusions are in terms of the complaint that I've made about um, uh, Tylee in respect to the conduct of Scaffolder. Um, he says, and I'll, I'll, uh, uh, the allegation, and this has to be included in the beginning of, 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 of any professional standards report, um, is, is cited as, as follows. Allegation one, the complainant, that's me, Ben Gray, alleges criminal misconduct, suborning, uh, and in brackets, suborning, collusion in threats to kill, affray, public order, fear of violence against PC Tiley, uh, PC Garth Tiley, I should just uh, give you his full, full name just in case I haven't said it already, outside Bristol Crown Court, 29th July 2020. Uh, and the quotation is from me, when I asked what he, the builder, wanted, he said, if he had a problem with you, I'd fucking tell you, close quotation marks, before marching over to me and telling PC Tiley that he would put me straight to sleep, uh, straight to sleep in quotation marks again. His threats continued along with his attempts to get through Tiley and his colleague who barred his way. The male withdrew. Uh, that scaffolder is the male. Uh, but he and his work colleagues continued to mock me, make obscene gestures and offer more violence. About five minutes later, he was allowed to leave. Very straightforward complaint, considering it was recorded both by uh, Tylee on his body-worn footage. I, I think Con uh, Gongrave had a, a body-worn footage as well, body-worn camera. And of course, I'm recording both of them and Scaffolder. So uh, all the allegations can clearly be substantiated one way or the other. Uh, but this is the conclusion that uh, Richard Budd came to when he finished his report. He says... In summary, Mr Gray has sought to involve the police in a disagreement he had with Bristol Crown Court Listings Office in relation to how his case before the court was being handled. The police attended to take details of his complaint. The attending officers were PC Tiley and PC Con uh, Gonclaves. Uh, they attempted to get details of his actual complaint against the court officers while standing outside the court. In doing so, this attracted the attention of some scaffolders who were working nearby. Well, a scaffolder was actually the case. There were, none of the other scaffolders were, e were even on that side of the huge lorry that was parked, uh, we can see parked further up the road. Uh, BG actions, B, uh, Ben Gray's actions, uh, he, he says BG throughout the report, but I'll just say Ben Gray so that we're clear about who he's talking about. Uh, ben Gray's actions in front of the officers was animated and loud as he tries to get his point across and, his, uh, and this will inevitably attract attention. At one point, while talking to the officers and filming the altercation, the interaction on his own camera, Ben Gray speaks to someone else out of a BWV, uh, body worn video, uh, view to say that he is not filming them. A little later, Ben Gray then became further distracted and focused on one of the scaffolders. He said, can I help you, mate? The scaffolder said, if I had a problem with you, I'd effing, uh, F, um, um, asterisk, 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 ing, tell you. Uh, Ben Gray said, what would you do, and walk towards the scaffolder filming? Well, just, just take a moment, moment's pause there. Um, we notice that, that uh, although when he gives the allegation at the beginning of the report, uh, Mr Budd is happy to use the full word fucking, um, but here he, when he's giving an account, um, an, a supposedly accurate account of what um, the uh, uh, scaffolder has said, he's deleted the offensive UCK, uh, as though poor Mr. Budd has very sensitive ears and doesn't want to upset anybody reading this report. The only person likely to be reading it is me, <laughs> who's already been the victim of somebody actually swearing at the top of his voice in a public street. So I wasn't the only victim, of course. It was anybody on the other side who couldn't be seen on the other side of the lorry, like children. We can see moments later a female appears with her bicycle in the background to the altercation. She, of course, is the victim of a public order offence. 
Uh, so the hypocrisy on Mr. Budd is um, already rampantly apparent. He's he's deleting the offensive word as though Mr. Budd or the, the reader is somehow extremely sensitive to the use of swear words um, uh, in, 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 the, in the way that he does. But we'll, we'll come back to uh, the more general point in a moment. Uh, Mr. Budd goes on in his report. The scaffolder said... Don't, don't walk to me like you're somebody big. And sorry, the scaffolder the, in quotation marks. Don't walk to me like you're somebody big. I'll put you straight to sleep. Don't come near me and be disrespectful. He says to the police, remove him or I'll remove him for you. It, it is this verbal exchange which forms the basis of Ben Gray's complaint against PC Tiley. He alleges, well, he, then Mr. Budd repeats the allegation that we read out in allegation one. He goes on, uh, Ben Gray would state that this situation was aggravated because he had asked PC Tiley to move location due to the noise of the scaffolders working. PC Tiley's response was that he saw no need to move and wanted to stay in proximity to his colleague who had been making inquiries in the Crown Court. Well, we could still be, of course, in proximity to his colleague, Gong Graves, um, by being over the, uh, over on the... In fact, we could be nearer to, to where she is because she's over at the court building outside the court building or on the pavement. That would be a perfectly, uh, that would be a better compromise because then we would be away from the scaffolders and nearer to the court, which is where Mr. Bird claims that Mr. Tidy claimed he wanted to be, which is near his colleague. Um, and of course, if we, even if we went a few feet down the road, uh, down small streets, um, the name, as it suggests, is a small street. So we could be a reasonable distance from the scaffolders, again, even outside the court building, but even further away from the, from the scaffolders and avoid the noise problem, which was my complaint, and would be the complaint of anybody who wants to complain as the victim or even even the, the suspect, so that, it, that the, a proper understanding of what's going on can be reached between the officers, uh, between the officer and the civilian. <coughs> Uh, PC Tiley does attempt to try and explain that you just need a summary of the allegation to record a crime and that they can then further address the matter over email, i.e. he doesn't need the full circumstances at that point in order to proceed to record a crime. Where this conversation takes place is a judgment call for the officer and I don't find that his decision making was flawed in trying to get sufficient detail to record the crime for it to be further investigated at a later stage. The evidence from the BWV, the Body Worn Video, shows that it is Ben Gray that initiates matters with the scaffolders, uh, and one scaffolder in particular, especially when he asks him if he can help. Well, let's deal with that point. That is a bold-faced, utter concoction. Um, what, what Bud does do is, 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 is um, he accepts at the beginning of the report, um, if I can find it off the top of my head, uh, uh, quickly, I, I'll, I'll refer to it, uh, yes, he just he refers there to YouTube video because I I didn't have the facilities to uh, send the video um, by because it, it won't fit onto any email uh, transmission. So I, I I put it on YouTube and then referred it in my complaint for Mr. Budd to be able to or to whoever was the investigating officer and it always is Mr. Budd as I've already made clear um, to access and, and look at. So he has the YouTube. He says. Um, ben Gray did upload his own recording of the incident, which I have viewed. The content is shorter than the BWV, but is consistent with that footage. It has subsequently been taken down by the uploader. Well, he says, he, I mean, he, 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 he has viewed the footage. Uh, presumably he could have recorded it, or doubt they have the facilities to da download footage from the YouTube channel uh, by, by some means. Um, so, um, but he doesn't refer to it anywhere in his, his report. He's, he refers only to the body worn uh, footage of Tiny. And of course, that doesn't help because uh, the, it is my view of the builder that proves that uh, Bud is lying uh, because he's referring to only the view from Tiny. Um, but uh, just to return to that sentence, the evidence from the BWV shows that it is BG that initiates matters with the scaffolders. But of course, that that is a complete concoction it doesn't show who's initiated what because it's only me that can see and of course my camera once i focus in on scaffolder of what scaffolder is doing to me and scaffolder has come down i've seen him walking down from the top of small street near the uh, one end of the lorry all the way down uh, to within as i've already said 10 12 15 feet from uh, me to stare straight at me whilst I'm engaged in this heated discussion with a person in authority. 
Uh, he claims he's on the phone. It's not clear whether he is on the phone to anybody. He doesn't continue with any conversation, certainly. And when I've um, asked him, what, uh, I, and when we can see, and here's the photograph of the time the camera lands on him, he's already been staring at me for 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, so he's initiated contact with me, simply picking somebody out of a crowd and going over to them physically and then staring straight at them, uh, you know, even if they're not half naked as uh, a scaffolder was and covered in uh, sort of, um, uh, what I think they're called um, uh, tribal tattoos. Uh, and he's clearly a very bulky male, and he's clearly very, as we shall see, he's, he's, he's itching for uh, for violence. He's clearly very proud of the fact that he, he could probably have knocked me out uh, if he'd wanted to, uh, or done, or killed me, in fact. Um, uh, and uh, so, but it's him that initiates. I haven't, he, the, the implication from Bud is that I've simply picked him out of a crowd. Indeed, he talks about other, other scaffolders. There's no scaffolder within a country mile of what, well, certainly within the visual uh, sight of the video camera that I've got, um, I haven't addressed scaffolders. I've just simply focused in on the man who is eyeballing me, the half-naked man who is eyeballing me uh, in, a, in, a, in an intimidating and unnerving way. Uh, what follows, says Bud, is a verbal argument. The threat to put Ben Gray to sleep comes when Ben Gray asked the scaffolder what he would do as he was walking towards him. Both parties have... Um, have an aggressive attitude, but in reality, this does not escalate to anything more than a verbal argument with PC Tiley standing in between the parties. Well, we can see um, the what, what he's done. You see, is at the beginning of this um, of his conclusions, way back, to, um, you know, a page and a, a page back, um, he's talked about what um, the, the initial exchange is between myself and a scaffolder. I've said, "Can I help you, mate?" The scaffolder has said, if I had a problem with you, I'd fucking tell you. He's deleted the, uh, the fuck word, but let's, let's call it for what it is. That's what he did say. Um, so by the time he's actually dealing with that stage, there's no mention of the fact that the builder has threatened to fucking tell me. So the, there's no mention of the fact that the builder has, called, has provided prima facie evidence, or indisputable evidence, I would say, of committing a public order, Section 5 Public Order Act, by using, um, uh, by causing harassment, alarm, or distress, by using profanity loudly at a complete stranger when he's asking why he's effective. I'm asking why he's staring at me. He seems to want something from me. He wants my attention because that's why he's staring. Uh, of course, he is entitled to be standing where he is. He's entitled to be rubbernecking if he finds something that he may be wanting to gather evidence in case I'm assaulted by the police officer. So I don't have any objection to him being there per se. But of course, he can be in a position where he's looking at both of us rather than just simply staring at me. He's standing behind the police officer and he's just simply staring and staring. He's not, he's not, um, just, he's not casually or politely looking at what's going on or, or making it clear, you know, being subtle about it. He's just staring straight at me. Um, which which is an offence in and of itself before you even get on to him then swearing at me, just staring at a stranger when you're half naked. It would clearly be profoundly wrong if I was a female um, and uh, I don't see it should be any difference because of I'm another gender. Um, so it, 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 um, Bud is completely lying about that. He's, he's taken, he's, he's, he's assuming that everyone's forgotten by the time he comes to dealing with the, ex the initial exchanges, he's forgotten... Para, um, you know, 10, 12 paragraphs back that, that this man has just sworn at me for no reason because I've asked him why he's staring at me. Um, and especially when he asked him if he can help. Uh, he's saying that I've initiated matters. Well, I hope we covered that because first it's the builder who's come over to me and then he's sworn at me when I've asked him what he, what he wants. Uh, what follows is a verbal argument. The threat to put Ben Gray to sleep comes when Ben Gray asks the scaffolder what he would do as he is walking towards him. Both parties have an aggressive attitude, but in reality this does not escalate to anything more than a verbal argument with PC Tiley standing in between both parties. Ben Gray alleges that PC Tiley has colluded in offences by not dealing with the scaffolder for threats to kill, threats of violence or public order offences. Um, well, what Tiley... Uh, what, uh, Mr. Budd is saying here is that, that in his view there is no offence of uh, threat of using swear words. He, he himself deletes the F word even in his report of the account that Mr. That the, that Mr. Scaffolder is using. So he clearly 
if it's not an offensive word, why can't he put it in his own report? And why is it therefore acceptable for this male to be using that word loudly in a public street? And we all know if you go on YouTube, you can see untold footage of officers who are threatening. Or if you go on to the, the uh, there's police interceptors, which is on Channel 5 or any of those programs, police immediately threatening to arrest, even if they don't actually arrest, people who begin to swear in conversations with police when police themselves cannot formally or technically be, be uh, victims in a Section 5 public order. It can only be arrestable if there are other members of the public likely to be offended by it, in which case it is an arrestable offence. Um, which carries a, a, a fine. And um, the uh, scaffold has no idea, nor does PC Tiley, who's on the other side of the, uh, of the lorry, uh, who else is on the street. And we can see a female innocent party becoming involved, uh, looking over to what's going on moments later on the video itself. Uh, so this man has committed a Section 5 public order. It's, not, it's, it's just a, it's a cut and dried case of, of a Section 5 offence, even before we get to the threats to kill. Um, and then uh, Mr. Bug goes on. It is my conclusion that PC Tiley has acted to prevent the incident spiralling out of control as Ben Gray then starts to make insults towards the scaffolder by calling him an animal and a degenerate. This could only serve to inflame the situation and as such could himself be alleged to be committing a public order offence. PC Tyler has used his discretion to separate the parties and calm the situation down. So, in fact, even though I've not offended this man at all initially, I call uh, in terms of using the, the language that I do use against him, which is that he's a degenerate and an animal and a monster. Well, I'll come to that in a moment. But um, whatever I do, I can't possibly be uh, if, if I'm potentially a culprit for the for a section five public order what is this man when he's threatened to put me to sleep because all the words that i use against um uh, scaffolder are after the scaffolder has threatened to put me to sleep and to knock me out and needing to be physically restrained by mr tiley um so uh the obviously in terms of the scales of justice or the the, the partisanship of uh, of mr bud he it's it's if i react as any human does to being threatened with threats to kill or with the f word being um effectively yelled at him or spoken loudly at him and to being physically for this male to be needing to be physically restrained from coming towards me um and to knock me out uh, regardless of the fact this man is, is clearly very large and uh, very um, uh, 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 and half naked, um, it, it, then clearly th th that that should be you know the, um, I, I am reacting to that is clearly not the same as somebody who's picking somebody out of the crowd and calling them a degenerate and an animal, uh, and certainly can't can't be construed if, if they are reacting to what is major violence. And they're in the heat of the moment um, reacting to somebody being violent towards them, especially, of course, as it is being tolerated, if not in encouraged. You know, Mr. B Bud talks about me inflaming the situation. Clearly, if an officer is standing there and allowing this man to commit a Section 5 offence, then threatening to kill, then threatening to knock somebody out and, and uh, needing to be physically restrained by the police officer, that police officer is clearly might as well be standing on the same side as... Uh, as a scaffolder. He's doing nothing to, in, to indicate that this scaffolder is committing an offence, as is Mr. Budd. Both Mr. Budd and Tiley are hand in glove with scaffolder. Um, but in terms of my committing a Section 5 public order on its, in its own right, there's nothing... I, I'm, I'm, I'm well within my rights to free speech in terms of calling somebody out for the behavior degenerate simply means somebody that's that whose moral values in any given situation or generally is below what most normal human beings or what is accepted as the moral standards in a particular um type of conduct um the 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 uh behavior of this man is clearly immoral he's clearly got no moral standards if he's threatening to kill a complete stranger if he's effing and blinding when he knows that there are lots of innocent children around or innocent parties around even if i'm committing some kind of wrong by asking him what he wants when he is eyeballing me um in a situation that he knows nothing about to a complete stranger um so the degenerate is perfectly reasonable indeed is what a judge or a, a prosecutor should be calling this man as if he's being sentenced or when they're talking about what potential sentence he should be getting it's a degenerate um by any standards and he must 
presumably have criminal record. I'm not saying I'm not can't obviously know for certain because he was never questioned and no details were ever taken from him. Of course, we'll come to that. But um, if he if he's doing this to somebody who's uh, when there's police officers present to somebody who can uh, potentially stand up for himself. Um, God knows what he would be like when there were no police officers around, uh, um, and if he was talking to a female or a child, or, or and he's do, and he's already behaving like this when he's well aware he's right outside the Crown Court, the, the law courts for for crying out loud. Um, so um, he's clearly a degenerate. He's clearly a monster. I mean, he, he, he even um, you know, he's, there's nothing about anything about this man that isn't monstrous. His, his language, his effing, his threats to do serious violence over a t an argument that had nothing to do with him at all, in which he's not in any way threatened or in any way needs to be involved at all. Um, and um, so he's he's a monster in that respect, and he, and he's filth. Um, because of it, for the same reason, uh, uh, filth is a, is a brilliant word because it has that is a, a good is a good kick to it in the same way almost a swear word does, but it's not swearing, and it just you are sort of it, it puts somebody down with the level of 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 grime and filth that that, that people should be uh, you know that the, the, they they belong in that realm of things they're not spiritual should we say above the filth as um, as, as some people try and aspire to be. Even if uh, they can't be, and of course that that same uh, n name should apply, of course, to Mr. Budd himself. He's clearly a degenerate, corrupt piece of filth because he's colluding in the corrupt piece of filth of Ty Lee and the scaffolder. And of course, he's supposed to be independent from Ty Lee and the scaffolder, just as Ty Lee is supposed to be independent from the argument myself. And of course, what what's really going on, as we can all see, is that because Ty Lee doesn't know how to deal with me, he doesn't want to make a uh, uh, help make a formal complaint against the uh, uh, um, the court staff at Bristol Crown Courts because they're they're in his pockets as much as he's in theirs. Um, obviously, we don't need to go into too many details about that because that will just confuse things. But he doesn't know. He, he, he's got a. He, I would suggest that's why he wants to keep the argument by the scaffolders to try and get them involved, and um, that's the, that that may be his motive. But even if it isn't. He's, he's the, the, the scaffolder is sorted out. He's, he's completely distracted any kind of uh, progress of my complaint against um, the, 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 the staff, which is what Mr. Bud claims that Mr. Tiley is trying to help with. And um, he's, uh, the, the situation has been resolved by this, this um, potential um, uh, affray or violence um, all, all over this, this scaffolder deciding he wants to become, he wants in on the action and wants to put the boot in. Uh, to what's going on, even though he obviously hasn't a clue what is going on. Um, uh, and then he, uh, Bud goes on to say, in terms of the, 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 the putting to sleep um, words, I do not agree that this is a threat to kill. It's not clear that this is what Bud is talking about, because because the threat to kill is, is five paragraphs back. And this is, this is one of Bud's techniques, is to take... Um, the, you know, some aspect of the of the complaint, the most serious aspect, and then pepper it out throughout the um, uh, through the conclusions or throughout the report. So by the time he's got on to dealing with his conclusions about early, about you know the most serious, more serious aspects that are mentioned paragraphs and paragraphs back, it's not even clear what he's talking about anymore, and he's not not making any concrete particular findings on particular aspects of of the complaint but anyway this is clearly what he's talking about as we should go on to see the term put you to sleep mr bug goes on is subjective and could be interpreted a number of ways and is not a clear threat to take a life uh, the cps charging standards guidance indicate that such an offense bracket section 16 offenses against the person act 1861 close brackets should be reserved for the most serious cases this would not constitute a serious case well, there we can see Bud contradicting himself and calling himself out as a liar within that paragraph. If it is, the, if the put to sleep is not a clear threat to kill on any basis and could be interpreted as something completely innocent, and we'll come to that in a second, then what relevance does it have to the seriousness of the type of threat to kill under the um, police, uh, the CPS guidance? Um, so. He should make a clear-cut acceptance that, that that certainly putting to sleep is usually referred to as a threat to kill. I've never heard of put to sleep ever used in, in any other context than kill. You don't say, I'm going to put my child to sleep, do you? I'm going to, you, you say you're going to put your child to bed, 
um, or somebody you're going to take somebody who's ill and, and, and help them get to sleep and um, uh, you know uh, tuck them up and, and so forth you don't say I'm gonna I'm gonna put them to sleep because you know that that is reserved for when a, a, a tactful way of talking about killing a pet um, or, 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 or an animal um, it's uh, and indeed it's particularly heinous because this man is, is referring to me as an animal clearly because it, rather than say he's just going to kill me, which would probably be more straightforward and more honest, he's, he's, he's referring to me as though I'm an animal and he's going to um, uh, kill me as an animal uh, in the same way somebody would kill an animal by the words put to sleep. Um, and of course it's the context in which he's saying it and uh, Mr Budner makes no mention anywhere in his report that the fact that the recording can clearly hear the male, uh, the scaffolder also saying he's going to knock me out. Uh, moments after saying he's going to put me to sleep to, to, uh, and needing to be physically restrained. Again, no mention anywhere in Mr. Budd's report of the fact that the male needs to be physically restrained repeatedly through, uh, or certainly within the few minutes surrounding the, the most heated situation when the male has come over. Um, the, 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 the so, I mean, and, and what other way could, is Mr. Budd saying he needs to be clear about what other interpretations could be meant? That the man is offering to put me to sleep because he thinks I suffer from insomnia and he wants to offer me a glass of warm milk and tuck me up at night? I don't want a strange man. Don't, we don't, nobody surely wants any strange male or woman coming up to another stranger on the street saying, I'm going to help get you to sleep. Because that, that that's even that has even worse connotation than one of, of serious violence, which is clearly um, uh, to uh, help uh, may goes towards some sort of sexual uh, 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 meaning. Um, either either way, it's not it's not even if it's just genuinely he thinks I suffer from insomnia and he wants to help me get to sleep, or he just thinks in the middle of the afternoon I might need a lie down. Um, you know, is is obviously arrant concoction from a lying degenerate evil um, professional standards investigator who is simply covering up and lying for the conduct of Tiley who in turn is covering up for the conduct of this brute. Um, in terms of the CPS guidance well it's nothing to do with, 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 with Bud. Bud is, if Bud wants to become a member of the CPS he needs to get a law degree and join the CPS. At the moment he is an, a, a, a civilian so he's not even a serving police officer. Um, and for any serious criminal allegation or decision over charging or potential charge that will involve an indictable offence, such as threats to kill, that needs to be referred to the police, the re uh, to, to the CPS. The police need to refer that decision um, to decide on a charge because the police have um, or are often have been found in the past to constantly be bringing the wrong charges when they had the discretion to charge people with serious offences. They can charge people or make a, a charging decision for less serious summary offences, uh, but where there's any question mark over whether it should be for a, um, a, 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 a serious charge, a, a, mo a more common one is the ABH or, um, or common assault, because uh, sometimes a bruise or an injury can be either ABH or common assault, that decision has to be made by the CPS because anything that may end up in the Crown Court rather than the Magistrates Court is handed over to the CPS. Mr Budd has no power and no knowledge and no training about what the CPS decisions could make. Um, and indeed, he's not even a police officer. And even if he was a police officer, he wouldn't have that power because he needs to have uh, he needs to be a member of the CPS and have the appropriate legal training and experience. Um, but it, but it, what, if Mr. Budd is saying that it's, it's not a threat to kill, what relevance does that point have anyway? And in turn, and assuming that he does accept that it is a threat to kill, or it, it is most like almost certainly to be interpreted, and of course. Um, uh, scaffold has never been questioned. We don't know what he means by it. Mr. Budd doesn't know what he means by it. I can surely uh, imagine that he's he's threatening to kill me because what else, what other interpretation could it have? Um, but because this man's never questioned, Mr. Budd simply acts as the devil's advocate, almost literally, not in the metaphorical sense, but he's literally representing this sort of devilish satanic being in the form of the... Uh, the, the, the half-naked tattooer threatening to kill a complete stranger for no apparent reason. I mean, the fact that I've walked towards him, let's deal with that momentarily, or uh, just take a quick side, side, uh, side lane on that. Uh, I've more, I've, the, the dividing barrier, the, the um, barrier is, um, is, shows that I've only, you know, on the left, 
it, I've only walked towards three or four feet towards that. The male has already come all the way down the street, as I've already said, and then he, he moves even closer to the bar. And the only reason he hasn't come further still is because, as we'll come to as the final point of points in this, um, that um, the, he has to be restrained. He is physically being restrained by uh, Tylee from actually making physical contact with me. Um, but so uh, the uh, the terms of the put to sleep and the subjective interpretation of it, um, assuming that it is accepted as a threat to kill, well, how would it not constitute a serious example of a threat to kill? What does Mr. Budd require for a threat to kill to be um, especially serious in his mind's eye? The um, uh, Somebody who um, uh, th writes a letter to somebody threatening to kill them almost you know, not, not always, but there will often be some kind of grievance to that. And somebody has gone too far by reacting with a threat to kill. You know, that he slept with their girlfriend or uh, there's some, uh, you know, animus there. There's some grievance that, that would prompt somebody to threat to kill. Of course, people, I'm sure, make threat to kills for no reason at all, which is the example that we have here. Um, um, and in this case, it's, 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 it's particularly serious because I'm a complete stranger. It's happened in front of a police officer. Um, so it's an indication of the mindset of this of this um, uh, psychopath um, the, uh, that he's, he's quite willing to make the threats to kill in front of a police officer um, and uh, the, the, the general uh, violence that's being threatened by the male uh, as well as to knock me out and needing to be physically restrained. Um, Mr. Budd says it's six of one half a dozen of the other. I've also uh, harassed him because after he's threatened to kill me, I've said I've, I've said that he's he's what he is, which is a degenerate and an animal and a monster, which is how most people would perceive somebody who's threatening to kill a complete stranger for no apparent reason. The fact that I've moved a bit towards him is not grounds to threaten to kill somebody. There's no suggestion that I've threatened to him. And any uh, Section 5 public order offence that Mr. Budd thinks that I might be guilty of is a response to this man already threatening to kill me. So none of the threats to kill have anything to do with anything I've done except moving slightly towards him, um, which is not in and of itself offence, and only prompted by the fact that he's said um, he's going to effing tell me about something. Um, <clears throat> So uh, exactly, I mean, what, what would Mr. Budd require for a serious case if this isn't an example of it? Because it's only a threat to kill, isn't it? I mean, we can say you can that there are the degrees of threatening to kill when somebody clearly doesn't mean that they're going to kill anybody at all. Because I'm, I'm going to kill you when they say it to a friend or say it to a, a work colleague. Uh, when it's clearly not meant or when they write a letter out, oh, I'm going to kill you at such and such a date and that's clearly premeditated and uh, maybe the fact that it's not premeditated is is is, is the only uh, mitigating circumstances in this case but it, he's not saying it in response to any threat from me to him or anything that I've done uh, uh, to warrant being threatened to have my life taken um, Next paragraph from Mr. Budd. In terms of whether any action should have been considered against the scaffolder, I would point to the fact that Ben Gray initiated the confrontation. Lie, 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 Mr. Budd, because I did not initiate the confrontation. Here is the male eyeballing me, as we've already established, um, and not mentioned and deleted, uh, even though he's, he's even if it can't be seen from the body worn camera of uh, the officer that's got his back to the scaffolder, it was seen on my video. Uh, which we've seen and which he himself says he's seen at the beginning of the report. <clears throat> and by his words and actions continued to make derogatory comments towards the scaffolder up until the point they left in the lorry. Well, uh, that, that is just completely factually uh, bogus. The, um, uh, all the comments and all the complaints about the mail are, after, um, uh, are made before I make any comments in response to that. Uh, to, to his conduct and of course my con my words to him are because the officer is simply standing aside like a, a complete um, inanimate object whose only uh, involvement in um, bringing uh, the scaffolders to justice or in, in imposing public order in the vicinity of the building and of course the, 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 you talk about I mean this this officer himself has arrested me uh, in the past for a um, uh, for a breach of the peace, which is when where there was no violence, when I, I, I splashed some water uh, at a, um, in, in a, in a in a police station um, in the context of a whole load of issues that we won't go into. But nobody was uh, no, there was no complainant in terms of the splashed water. 
Uh, and um, but I was arrested for a breach of the peace uh, to prevent a breach of the peace in that case. Uh, this man is has threatened violence and needed to be physically restrained from further from carrying out those threats. All of which has happened way before I make any comments to him about calling him out as for what he is because of his behaviour. So my behaviour has nothing to do with anything. The only thing that Mr Budd can point to is the fact that I have walked two or three paces towards a man who has already come from the top of the street to eyeball me and then himself moves further. There's no mention of not only of, of um, the... Uh, uh, of Mr. Scaffolder needing to be restrained, but the fact that the, the Scaffolder has himself moved closer to me than I've gone towards him. You can see from the dividing point of the black bollard, he is right by the bollard by the time um, PC Tiley has to restrain him, um, whereas I was already by near, near, near the, not the bollard, but the, um, the sort of the uh, trestling sculptor type um, pillar thing, um, whatever it actually is, uh, black sort of, get, I think a part of the gate to the Guildhall chambers um, opposite the, the court. But whatever that black sort of trestling thing is, um, that if you take that as the measuring yard, I've gone a couple of feet. This man has gone from the top of the street down to eyeball me and then come right to the trestle point. So he's, he's moved far closer to me, and all of which is deleted. Uh, and of course, he's the one that's making threats to kill. Uh, and, uh, and threatening to knock me out and do, do me serious harm, even if it's not actually threatening to kill me, put me into a coma, uh, uh, maybe uh, was on his mind's eye rather than simply kill, killing me, which is how putting to sleep normally means. But even if we were to give him the benefit of the doubt, knocking me out uh, leaves no room for any ambiguity or interpretation that can be spun by this lying crook, um, Mr. Budd. Um, uh, as such, I do not see this as anything other than, the, than a verbal argument consisting of six of one and half a dozen of the other. The officers exercise their discretion to talk and encourage both parties to desist in their behaviour without having to resort to criminal justice solution, which in my view was the correct decision. Uh, there is no evidence that PC Tiley has acted in collusion with the scaffolder. The evidence of the BWV tends to indicate that PC Tiley has taken an arbitrary position and has used his discretion to deal with his, this argument through words and advice to both parties, i.e. he has not sided with any one party. As such, my, it is my conclusion that the level of service provided was acceptable. Uh, well, service to who? I mean, the... Um, uh, the, the, the service is obviously to the public generally and the public good. Uh, even if I, I, I am because I'm the enemy of Mr. Budd and um, um, will be releasing lots of these videos and complain about him in the courts and elsewhere as being egregiously corrupt and, and effectively a godfather figure to which all other corrupt police officers, if they have a problem um, who I've complained about um, in the past, can go running and uh, have him lie and lie and lie um, to act out his own personal vendetta against me, even if I'm taken completely out of the equation. What about the female that had to hear and, and, and witness this man's uh, terrorising behaviour? Maybe she thinks it's uh, perfectly acceptable, but the public at large clearly do not. They need to be protected, if not from swearing, and of course everybody swears and it's part of everyday language, but swearing in a particularly aggressive way has uh, surely aggravates that, but then needs to be physically restrained from carrying out violence and have it, and repeatedly, not once, not with the threat to sleep, where, where is any mention of the fact that he's going to knock me out? Why is that? What's the equation between him threatening to knock me out and indeed kidnap me? Because he says, does he not remove him or I'll remove him for you? He's, uh, Mr. Budd himself quotes it earlier on in the conclusions. He quotes, um, uh, uh, remove him or I'll remove him for you, which we can hear he's saying on the video. What is that but a threat to kidnap me? I'm not going to I'm not clearly going to go willingly with this male to be removed to be removed where removed from the face of the earth thrown into uh, to Avonmouth um removed out of small street or to another city any any uh, 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 removal of myself by this male would be criminal kidnap uh, but so uh, we've got the kidnap the threat to kill the threat to knock me out the physical restraint uh, that needs to be involved by Tylee, all of which is whitewashed or not addressed compared to my saying that such behaviour is degenerate and animal behaviour. Uh, and clearly the same uh, allegation applies to Mr Budd himself. Do you want this man overseeing the conduct of police officers? He's been signed off by D, D, uh, Detective Inspector Stephen 
uh, uh, Gary Stevens? Do you want this man who has o overseeing the conduct of these threats to kill? Would it make any difference if I was a young female and he'd done this or an elderly lady? Would that then be totally unacceptable? Or if I wasn't uh, somebody who's campaigning to expose corruption in the first place, which is what this is really about. This is about the police getting others to do their dirty work, even if it's this filth um, uh, scaffolder that, 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 that's in the video. Uh, and we go back to the to my earlier point and final point is that um, uh, uh, the namesake of Gary Stevens, Gary Glitter, uh, was in, was the, somebody that was um, being investigated when uh, by by Bud or involved in the investigation because he's online. I'll, I'll put the uh, the link up on the screen um, here when this this video is edited edited. Um, and he's, he's standing outside the very building where this incident occurred, Bristol Crown Court, where he's um, talking about um, the, you know, something that we all know, which is the heinous nature of uh, paedophile conduct, such as um, Gary Glitter was carried out. But what on earth, if this, if this is this man's standards of what's right or wrong, let alone the fact that he's lying and lying and lying and lying in his report about what's actually being seen, deliberately spacing out what the conduct is or the most serious elements of the conduct he, he obviously whitewashed the physical restraint that needs to occur repeatedly from the uh, scaffolder he's ironed that he's whitewashed the um uh, the threat the, the 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 threats to knock me out um he's lied about the fact that the that, that, that i've initiated the the incident um if, if he's lying in this what, what on earth is he doing has he done in, in well what's he done with other investigations never mind the ones that he's been involved with myself they will be the subject of further videos but uh the what about um those um involved in the gary glitter case how what what lies has he told in potentially in, in covering up offenses carried out by gary glitter or offenses carried out in other cases similar other child abuse cases um the G gary stevens is mentioned online and i'll see if i can find the link for that and put that up because he was involved in a, in the somali grooming um in, in some uh, outrage in 2016 where uh, the the, the um, f f a rape case he was involved with. You you don't want officers who are dealing with any kind of crime, let alone the most serious and heinous type of crimes, be, having evidence of being crooked and lying and covering up um, I I I in any matter. Because it clearly, even if they're not doing so, it gives the uh, it, it raises the potential they are doing so in, in those cases. So. It may be that, that you find me particularly obnoxious, maybe that um, it's my tone of voice or my uh, uh, that I'm saying or doing something that other people find objectionable and therefore I can't get the sympathy I could get if I was another section of community, uh, an, a, a, some, an ethnic minority or an elderly lady, somebody that's more likely to get sympathy or uh, the fact that I'm, uh, uh, you know, primarily, a, a, um, a, I don't have any kind of recourse in terms of money, social status, social standing or any of those kind of things that that normally get you uh, somewhere uh, higher up the ladder in the social justice system or that I mean, I mean in the in the criminal justice system rather um, but as I say if you can take me entirely out of the equation and look at the offenses carried out in their own right even if you're not concerned about the fact that this man is guilty of certainly misconduct in public office certainly perverting the course of public justice because lying in a formal report in order to exonerate another police officer is must be misconduct in public office and perverting public justice um, those are offenses that that carry life imprisonment because they strike at the heart of the public justice system and therefore make us all vulnerable and that is especially surely uh, more serious and more acute when you're looking at officers that that these two officers, the only ev the only um, information about them when they were acting as serving police officers before they got involved in the professional standard scam, which is what this clearly is. Uh, they, God knows how much this man gets paid out of the taxpayers and purse, but it's probably 30, 40, 50,000 pounds on top of his retirement uh, um, wages, I should, I should imagine, although I don't know. Uh, but he's getting a huge chunk of public money for covering up offences that go to the safety and health of the public general, uh, generally. Uh, and if they're doing it uh, in this matter, they're doing it in other matters, and they're making us all vulnerable. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, please uh, like this video. Please uh, circulate it to anybody that's interested in these kind of subjects. And let's have these uh, uh, degenerate 
criminal, uh, vile, heinous uh, individuals held to account before the public, court of public opinion uh, and, so, and preferably in the criminal courts. The only way that's going to happen is if these uh, kind of incidences, of this kind of skullduggery is um, highlighted. And this is just the tip of the iceberg uh, in terms of even simply for myself. But they are there. There no. There's, there's no. You cannot get a Rizzler paper between the animal uh, scaffolder who's who's uh, threatening to kill a complete stranger for no apparent reason, um, and knocking knocking him spark out or knocking him out, um, or and kidnapping him, than the police officers themselves. Uh, and indeed, uh, later on in the vid in this, uh, um, it's not on the video, but later on, and it would be shown on the on all the body worn video of. Uh, um, Mr. Um, uh, Tiny, he threatens to arrest me if I go back into the court uh, and bang the window, which is what they complained about in the beginning. And it was whether they, he was going to arrest me or take my, my complaint about them. But he was more concerned in kidnapping me uh, than he was about this man, this stranger threatening to kidnap me on effectively on, on the police officer's behalf. Doesn't that just say at all?